Hey y'all, so I got this order and I said, let me put it together on, um, let me record um, putting it together. Now, I've already started the one side. I don't have this back piece, the top piece on, but I've already started this one side. So this is just my glue water, my my Podge. Now this is what everything will look like once I get it all together. For this, I don't have, I'll um, pull the layers apart so you can see. For this, I won't have any um, black cardstock layers behind this. It'll um, glue down directly to the gold. This is the set that was, um, custom set that was purchased. So that's how I did this set. So that's why I don't have any, I won't have any black layers behind that. So here you have the, um, top gold layer. And then I have four. Four, four of the black cardstock layer, which is 110 um, pound cardstock. And then I have behind that, there was another gold. So it's, this is going to be for earrings, 2.5. It's a little, this, they're a little over 2.5, so they're 2.75. So, and um, my earrings are out. I sprayed them with Rust-Oleum clear lacquer on the front and the back. While well, I spray one side, let it dry, flip them over, spray the other side, or I'll spray the top, whatever side I spray first, I'll spray it, let it dry, spray it again, and then flip them over and spray the back twice as well or once, how many, how many ever layers I'm gonna do with the Rust-Oleum. And I do that because it helps them not tarnish as quick. So, again, you, I, if you were going to do this um, for two earrings, you would need two of these pieces that's facing the right way and two that's flipped in facing um, the other direction because once you put them together on the outside, the outside of the program, it, when you cut it, it cuts like this. So when you get ready to put it together and flip this, it fits to the back perfectly. And these four pieces are cut with the same shape, or this is like your shadow piece. If you, if when you're putting it together in the program, you'll notice that you're you're creating an outline in the program it would look like this but when you deconstruct it then you'll have the name by itself and the shadow by itself and you make all your base pieces or your layer pieces the same shape as the shadow let me get some of this out of the way so i have more room and if you were going to put layers behind this to build it up so it isn't just flat then you would make your um your layers for this the same shape as this as well so you could build it this piece up on top of the gold but I didn't do that so all I do now I on previous videos you'll see that I split this and I might take two of these and glue this to them the top of the shadow piece and I may take the other two and go ahead and glue this to them and then I would let that dry and then I would put my um, UV resin on both of these pieces so they could dry flat I like that method because you don't mess up either side of your gold pieces it doesn't have any run over or drippage or whatever but sometimes when that um, UV resin heats up, it makes these pieces buckle, even though you made them and laid them flat and got them to lay, lie flat once they dry with the Mod Podge. When you put that re UV resin on there, it heats up so much, it makes this sometimes buckle or they'll do weird little um, things after it goes under that lamp. So then when you would go to put them together, they wouldn't lie flat, so you would have to use your clamps to hold them in place and you would have to hold and and then your hand would be all over the um, acrylic. So with this one, I didn't do it that way. I just went on and did all my um, 
when I started the other piece, is what I'm saying. I just went on and did all my, um, put all my layers together, like I'm about to show you. So I just dip down in the Mod Podge. Grab one piece and I just dab it on or paint it on. Like so. Take the other piece, another piece, and line it up. And then I take my dry paper towel. No, not this one. That's for my gold. My bad. I take the wet paper towel. Put it under and squeeze it down. Sure it's lined up almost perfectly. Sometimes you can't get it perfect or it'll glue down before you get it perfect. You're a human. As long as you don't have anything looking weird, like like way off, and you send that to your um, customer. Try not to do that, but yeah. Then I just dab on top again and make do another layer until I get all four laid. Line it up. Press it down. I like doing it like this because um, that excessive glue, it when it comes out the side, the paper towel can catch it. It's just easy clean up and then whatever it does it doesn't you could just wipe that in make sure you wipe it into the sides don't wipe it off just wipe it in because it it um seals these edges that my podge and again with the last layer of the four Give it a little time to tack and press again. You also have that there while this um, paper towel is here and it's wet. I use um, um, wipes as well. I'll use those sometime, but I don't see I'm working at my, new, my computer desk, so on my old computer cabinet that I turned into a craft cabinet. So I don't have all my stuff over here. So now, I'll move on to the, make sure your hands are clean. I like to rub that glue off because that foil will pick it up. That gold foil will pick it up. So with these, I'm gonna start with the back. That way, when once I put this um, gold layer on, and I'll let them dry, then I will, um, cause I like to um, let it dry some before I start with the UV resin, cause it'll, it'll, these two products mixed together will make it cloudy and it will be too much. I'm not in view, I'm sorry guys. 
with this is all I'm doing. Because the stand is like literally in my face. So I'm like holding over here so I can see what I'm doing. So I line this up. some glue there if I have a little piece of um, wet paper towel that I'll wipe that off once I get it down then I take a dry towel flip it over the top and push down because sometimes you have to make sure these pieces on the edge lay because they'll buckle up because of the wetness of, in the glue and this is paper so it will curl up so I'll take that little piece of paper towel that I wet and just rub in there that excess glue off And clean it up. So, you see a, a few streaks there. I set it to the side and let it dry a little bit and then I um, do the resin and I'll let this dry a little bit and then I'll come back and show you the resin how I do it okay guys be back I'll be back all right y'all so I've allowed it to dry some decided I'm going to go ahead and do is attach the top gold foil piece because I got to go do something so I want to get this done so I, gotta, I won't just leave it unfinished I want to go ahead and get it done I'm just getting ready to um, apply the top shadow part, gold shadow part, to the layers that already have the back gold shadow part. So I'm going to line this gold top part up. Move my wet towel, bring my dry towel in. Line that up. Get it lined up as 
close as you can and then push down. My camera is shaky because it's up on the stand and the, it's on the, the table I'm working on or the pullout that I'm working on. So you see we got some glue transfer. Just take my little wet piece of paper towel that I had before and clean them out. Okay. I'm gonna do the other piece. Not too much worry about this because we're gonna attach that um, top name to that anyway. So, that's the other side. Just dabbing it on instead of wiping it. Cause sometimes when you wipe it, it gets in these cracks and it builds up and that's too much. So if you dab it on, you have a little bit more control and you won't get that excessive build up in those cracks and that causes you know when the um, UV hits it it causes it to look milky or sometimes it looks milky on its own because it's too caked up and it dries that way even though these um, the, um, the instructions on it say it dries clear it will dry milky if there's a buildup of it there's too much of a buildup so that's why I don't wipe it I have wiped it before you probably seen in videos but you live you live and you learn trial and error trial and error so line it up as best you can And then down on the dry paper towel, squeeze it. Make sure all the edges are down because remember I said this paper will buckle or start to curl as paper does when it's wet. See, I have some sliding over here, so I have to slide it back in place. Do it before it tacks up. That's why I don't have to. Yes. Yeah, you're gonna make sure it starts to tack in because, as um, I didn't show you, but it slid out of place when I push down. So now I'm just sliding it in that. You see I got all that glue. No worries though. Matter of fact, let me get a light. I was trying to work with, <laughs> but it worked. So, don't get too aggressive because this is paper and it will peel back. I've had that happen before from wiping too hard. The corner of the paper peeled up. So I try to wipe up with the paper instead of wiping down across the paper. If I'm in, not near the edge, then I'll go back and forth. But if you get to that edge, wipe over the paper, not across it. So.
That should do it. dry and then I'll be back to do the the um ribbon oh no oh no I gotta do the uh what am I thinking I gotta do the the name so I'm just gonna with this, I'm going to dab the glue on and I'm going to use some light. Use this glue. Dab it on. With the squirts, it's like I almost need a little paintbrush to get it going. Because this will deposit too much sometimes. Either way, it's going to make a mess over that gold foil. But you don't want to um, get too much on the front. Well, for this one, it's glitter because it will dull that glitter. Just make sure you get some in over, especially on the corners because you want it to lay flat. got glitter on the front of this already but I'm not going to worry about it too much because I have this damp wipe here and I can just push it down blot it off So help me get the excess glue. See a little bit on this B here. Sometimes the fibers get stuck to it, but I, I let it dry and then I, it just, they peel right off. I'll wipe right off. Okay, now for this end. down blot it down and I'll do the other one the same way and I'll let them dry then I'll be back to do the um, acrylic UV resin or whatever I'll call it some of everything so I'll be back that's my paintbrush in the way. I told you I can't see anything. This thing is on the stand. So, hey, y'all, hey. I'm getting ready to do um, my UV resin. This is the UV resin I use. This is what my lamp looks like. I have to turn it away when I'm working just in case. I hit it and it comes on. I don't want any premature hardening of my um, resin. So I just usually take my bottle and put it on. This is how I do.
Let's use the nozzle and move it around. Because I'm going to use my um, silicone makeup spatula to spread it. And since this um, is flat, you can put it as thick as you like because there is nothing else attached to the back of this. It's all uh, one level. No variating levels. I know with the um with the UV resin, it's tricky. If you put it on thin, super thin, you're good. But then you'll have to do multiple layers to build up a dome, the dome effect. Which that's what I, that's how I do mine. Cause the dome effect gives it like a 3D effect, and it looks it looks more like real gold. Even though they know it's not, but it's just a, the look, the aesthetics of it. So, this is what I do. I make sure the edges are coated because sometimes they don't get coated. You can, they'll be left um, naked or no resin is there. And if you go back, especially with this, if you go back and try to add it in, you can tell where it's been added in sometimes or it creates a uneven surface and it looks weird to me it's everybody well for for me it is but for the back it's not that bad especially on the corners it's not that bad because that that's where it'll be touching the um the earring so this is how i do mine you do yours however you like and i have it laying on this um white right now because I have the other side on. I, you remember I said I um, decided to just go ahead and put it all together instead of separating like I usually do. Just, I just put it all together instead of um, piecing it together, putting half, half together with the back attached and half together with the top attached. So on the other side, everything is all put together. It's just waiting on resin. So I put this um, white there to catch any overflow. So this is this is pretty much it. That's all I do. And I make sure everything is covered. Sometimes I take and go down the sides as well while I'm working that but I always I'll come back and coat the sides as well after everything dries and I'll do the sides to um seal it in further sometimes I do sometimes I don't but most of the times I do and I just slide my pieces into the under the light This light comes with a bottom, but I've I've, not, I've used it maybe once or twice, and that was when I first got it. And I was like, I I don't need that bottom piece; it just gets in the way. I put it on ninety, and I let that go a couple of times, and that's it. I'll turn it around, do the other side. Once it once it kind of um sets, then I'll take them both off and set them under here. Take them off of the um the wipe once I get it where it does not run where it sits and this one should be ready so see this side is, is already done I just need to clean it up a little bit and then put the um resin on I might spray it with rust-oleum that way it'll make it super um, clear for me and then I'll put the um, resin on. I usually don't spray it with Rust-Oleum, but you can if you want to, and then put the resin. I just usually don't. But I have done it before, and I like the results. See, because this has some of those fibers from the um, paper towel or from the wipe. So now they're both 
I can move both of them and then set them under the light and cure them for, I can do that for a few minutes. I'll keep, I just keep hitting my 90 um, seconds. Did I say minutes while ago? I probably did, but 90 seconds button and let it just roll. So, so I'll be back when it's time to do the front. All right, y'all. So here goes. I went on and did um, the other nameplate just to test it out because I just felt like it's going to be some issues and bubbles. It was <laughs> bubbles. But so this one I'm going to do a little different. I'm just going to dab the um, resin onto it and do it thin first and see how I like that. I'm going to use this little paintbrush. I have some on top. I have a little bit of resin on top of this um, my podge top. I just don't like the dab, dab it on method. I really don't, but I'm going to give it a go and see. Because for me, it kind of creates tiny little bubbles. So dabbing or brushing on. But I'm going to try it and see. And I'm not used to working with such a thin layer, but if you if you like building, that's that's great. You could do thin layers, but I, I don't like it. I like to put all mine on at once and I can move it around and set it and then it domes up. But I guess I could try this. Um, especially because this glitter is like this glitter just absorbing a lot of this as it's going down. So it just depends on the paper you're working with too. So keep that in mind. The Not all glitter papers are created equal. Just as not all foil papers. Because some papers are they look foil but they're mylar. Those papers you don't want because the resin just sits on top after it hardens and it'll peel right off. So keep that in mind. You want actual cardstock. The backing is paper. It's not shiny, it's not glossy, it's not smooth. It's, it has a paper texture. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for your cardstocks. I mentioned that in the group. There's plenty of information about that in the group. So if you just put mylar in or um, foil cardstock, it should come up. So I guess that's a, that's a thin coat that's coated. I'm gonna leave that as such. And I've already done this one. And of course, they gave me a few issues. So see how this turns out. And then I'll come back once I I'm going to do another layer. I'm going to do, after this layer, I'm going to do another layer. Um, I'll, I'll stay and show you that. And then I'll pause and get set up and bring the earrings over. So I can show you how I do my E6000. So I'll give it a second and I'll let that first cycle run through. And then I'll do a, um, a regular layer like I usually do it. And let's see if we run into any issues. If so, then I'll just start doing them super thin and build it up. I hate to do it like that. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't end up even. It's an uneven coat because you can miss spots or, I mean, you can miss spots even doing it thick how I usually do it. But with these uneven coats, Especially dabbing or brushing on, you could have it seriously uneven versus letting it pull up and then letting it level itself. So that looks 
looks okay. So now I'm going to go in and just load it up. I'm going to see if it creates any problems for me. Let me clean my um, tip. This is my favorite way to do it. It's just, to me, it's convenient. And I can just put what I need on. A lot of, a lot of, I, I see a lot of people say they don't like the, um, thick acrylic. But I do because it, it gives the most, um, protection. Drop my brush. To me, it's gives the most protection because a thick layer of, of acrylic over this cardstock pretty much protects it from the elements and you know wear and tear and whatever else so let me see I know somebody said, that's a lot of product. But I'm telling you, this plate, it will be, it will, everything will be covered and saturated in this um, resin. I keep saying acrylic, I know that, but it's the same thing, it's plastic. Same difference. Now let's see if we run into the bubble issue. Still prone to bubbles because it's not um still not um flat. It's not flat, so I think the build up does do better, would give you better results um to combat combat against getting bubbles. It's just the dry and the in between and the starting and stopping. Let's see. I have to do it real quick, like, because if I see a bubble form, then I move the light. But the fact I see a bubble, then I hadn't even done anything. Use that to pop bubbles. I'm not seeing anything forming. Let me check something. So I'm not seeing. I see one little bubble, but it's in there. But other than that, for this one, I think it, it'll work for putting a thin coat down first and then doing the dome. The other one, it gave me a little bit of an... I don't know if you can see that on, on this on camera, but right in there. It's like it was lifting or something. I don't know. It was just, just a little imperfection. So, I'm going to let this go a couple of times. And then I'll come back and um, show you how I'm going to do the um, E6000. Hey y'all, hey. So, I was going to spray the earrings, but I decided to, well, I sprayed the first set I was going to use, but I decided, let me try to apply the UV resin on them since I, I've never used it on the earrings. I always spray with Rust-Oleum Clear Lacquer, but I said, well, let me try with the um, 
resin. So I got the resin and put them on the earrings. This tape is just lets me know what side, which side I had started with first. So that's all that is. So I've done that, and now I'm going to apply the name place. Let me get my. I didn't grab my um, E6000. So I'm going to make these diagonal. So I pretty much put them where they're going to go and then I look and see where they're touching. And when I pick the nameplate up, I turn it over and put the E6000 in those spots. I gotta get it open so I can get it open. pick it up and I'll put it here and I'll just put just a glob I'll put a glob on there and then I take push it down a little now when I do like that some you will get some that'll run in the back if you can see that there it'll run but that's okay because that will dry clear but I use enough so when everything dries it um, will be stuck real well and I don't worry about it coming off So if I get any over, anything that starts to run over the side, I'll just push it back up to the side of the, I don't touch the plate, I just push it up some, closer to that plate. Like so. Same thing with the other one. It over for the glob because a little bead is not going to help you. for you to do a little bead of this because that's when you run into the problems where they pop off or they can pull it straight off or whatever if you did drop it I do this sometimes I'll set this on top of here just to give me a guide and see I already have some spillage over here got it too close to the edge
just to give me a guide to go by. And then I still check to make sure everything looks good. And that's it, guys. And I'll just let it set to dry. So, there you have it. I hope that helps.